Do not use. That just makes me want to use it. Don't use simple beep at me. <coughs> wow, that is a very strong basement smell. I, I love it. This whole do not use folder is still really getting my attention. Whoa. What is this? Hey guys, how you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because generous donation. You and I are gonna be taking a look at this PowerBook 165C for the first time. I have not looked at it whatsoever. I have not powered it up at all. I have not looked at anything else in the box. I wanted to save it all for this time that we share here because I think that's a great way to bond. So, what else do we have? Well, of course we have this 165C right here in great condition. This thing is pretty darn clean. I only did a little bit of cleaning to it, but overall, pretty good. There's some dust stuck in the keycaps that's probably, you know, 30 years old or whatever. Inside here, I also have Apple Error Codes 98 with a picture of Steve Jobs. I guess it's a, uh... okay. There's also a, like a motherboard schematic type thing on here. Well, that's pretty cool. Spec sheet, nice. I noticed there was also a spec sheet on the back I'm gonna carefully remove this. There we go. And it looks like we have PowerBook 165C. It's a pro con list, actually. <coughs> oh, that dust tasted great. Uh, pro, eight megabyte, probably of RAM, 80 megabyte hard drive, system 7.1. The cons, okay, so those are the pros. Now the cons are, CMOS battery, main battery, confidential documents to be erased with a bloody check mark. So I'm guessing that's been taken care of. Yes, I do not expect the CMOS battery to be operational in these old systems. Okay, pretty sweet. You know, the other con that wasn't on that little piece of paper is probably that half the capacitors have already exploded. So we'll just have to deal with that. I'm sure this thing could go for a good recapping, but I'm not gonna deal with that right now, because if I did, I'd break something. I break enough as it is. What else is in here? Ooh, something leaked in there. We have cords, power cords, various power cords, I guess. I mean, you can never have too many of these things, so. What else? Um, oh, Apple Order 4.0? No idea. We're exploring here. Apple Order 4.0 service product update. And then there's Apple Order 5.0 on the back. No clue. We're gonna find out, maybe, if I care. <laughs> oh, dude, this is still shrink-wrapped. Here's the AOL 9.0 optimized. Okay, we got a floppy diskette in here. So originally it was system 607. That got scribbled out. Now it's PowerBook 150 accessories. And, oh, hello. Whoa. What is this? It's shrink-wrapped. It's got the original Picasso Macintosh art on it. This is an audio cassette, which is a guided tour of Macintosh, MacWrite, and Mac Paint. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I kind of want to hear it, but I don't want to open it. That's freaking awesome. Shit, I was not expecting that. What other awesome stuff did we get in here? Okay, that's the Power Brick. PowerBook 160, it says on there. That's a... That's good, hopefully this doesn't explode on me like the Power Mac G5 did. Yeah, I'm just gonna start laying stuff there. Oh, I love these. Hell yeah, we have a display adapter. I, I forgot what that end is called. This is DB15 here uh, for your video signal. What else do we got? Oh, hello, SCSI Doc. Yes, that is actually really, shoot, because I actually ordered an adapter one time that was a cable, not like a little dongle like this. And this was actually sitting in my storage for months. <laughs> if I would have done this tech video log earlier, I probably wouldn't have had to order that other adapter. But yeah, this is a SCSI dock for the HD. I think this is, um, what is that, like HDI 30 or whatever that's called? Hang on. Ah, the user's guide. This is, oh, this is for the Performa. Oh yeah. Yeah, I guess he did send me a bunch of extra goodies. This is not a Performa, but now we have extra goodies. So that's pretty sweet. 
<laughs> Musty Basement, Sense by Crazy Ken. Wow, that is a very strong basement smell. I, I love it. It, it. Basement or attic, it's, it's one of those. Um, I, I wonder how many diseases I just contracted by touching that. Very cool, very nice. Apple, Desktop Bus Mouse 2. Everyone always liked to color in the Apple logo. I cannot tell you how many mice I have in my collection where that's been colored in. That's handy, can never have too many of those. Oh my gosh, more conversion technology. This is great. This is a this is a CN50 male to female SCSI. And it looks like we have another HDI 30. Wow, yeah. That's pretty, good condition. Another HDI 30 SCSI dock adapter. Got two of them now. How much more is in here? Holy crap! Okay, let's see. Whoa. Envelope. Service source. That's a dusty envelope. An Apple computer, one infinite loop. An official Apple envelope. This is crazy. This is, oh wow. Oh, that's cool. Uh, this, I, I don't know, this, this thing says own a Mac 89. I don't know if this was a campaign or something they did. It predates my existence on earth. But yeah, it looks like it's officially from Apple. It does say, yeah, this was their Mariana Avenue location. That is a cool envelope. I, I just, I like how it's uh, starting to brown up there. You know, that's a nice aging quality. Holy cow. Maybe he did mention all of this stuff that he was also giving me and I just don't remember. This looks like it's a, a quick take envelope. Maybe they're advertising, advertising for the quick take. Speed tweaks for speed freaks. Macintosh system 7.5. Advanced multimedia, more power, exclusive software, runs DOS Windows at affordable price. Looks like some old uh, Apple advertising brochure sort of thing. Oh, hello, hello, Delilah. I don't think that's how that goes. Whoa, we got some stuff. This is a brochure on steroids, people. Lots of Apple products to choose from. But wait, there's more, there's another side. Even more Apple products to choose from, choose wisely. That is really sweet, I love this old stuff. This stuff is easy to collect because it conveniently folds flat. And there's a cat, how nice. Okay, wow, that was a, a lot of stuff. We're kind of just making a pile here. Again, very clean. It looks like we have our little sliders for the brightness and contrast over here instead of dials or buttons, little sliders, that's nice. We have our click button, two click buttons. I don't know if one is right click and one is left click. It's been a while, forgive me and the trackball, which actually feels like it's operational still. Keyboard, great, and our color display. And uh, behind here, yes, the little ergonomic feet. Yes, very good, I like that. So you can prop it up for ergonomic typing, how nice. And a uh, floppy disk drive. There we go. So this is the C model, C stands for color. So this is a color display, that's pretty freaking cool. Let's spin her around. I just assumed it was a she. I, I actually don't know, I'm sorry. We have the Kensington lock on that side and uh, a little door. How the shit, what? Oh, it was just stuck. I was like, I don't wanna break this thing. Okay, so we do have the SCSI there and uh, we have our display connection and serial Apple desktop bus and our restart and interrupt buttons as well. And uh, then there's this button. Mm, I don't really remember what that is. I don't know what that is. Well. Find out together, I guess. Is that power? No, power's on the inside, right? Oh, it's not. Actually, that might be the power button. On later models, the power button was just right on the keyboard, but uh, nope. That's not the way we do things around these here parts. Oh, I guess I could have looked at the symbols on top. Yeah, there's a power symbol there. Okay, yeah, good one. Okay, well, that's about it. Looks good, so let's plug it in. Ready to try it out? Let's go. So I just noticed something. This is actually not the first party block and I kind of picked up on that because of the design. It didn't feel very Apple-y. It's actually from battery technology. So it's kind of like my whole conversion technology thing I have going on, except it's battery technology. Okay, third party power cord. I feel better already. So I have a lot of stuff going on right here. Okay, maybe I should have taken some time to organize this just a little bit. We don't have time for that. Like seriously, the oxygen to this place could be shut down at any freaking time. So we're gonna hurry. Gonna plug that into the inlet first. 
Green light. Also, green dot. We could probably take that off. Don't think we need that. Plug it in. You know, there's no liquid cooler in here. You know, it's not gonna blow up like the other one did. So far, so good. Okay, let's open up the secret butt flap thing on here and just get to the power button. Here we go. First boot in my possession, to be more specific. Three, two, one. Hey, that's a good start. Screen's coming on. There's the hard drive. I cannot see it from this angle. Oh, it just simple beeped at me. I can't actually see it at all. There we go. Hang on, just <laughs> when I was messing with the slider earlier, that's what did it. Look at that beauty. That powered up quickly. There we go, system 7.1, we're at the desktop. So, let's dive in, take a look at the specs, see what's on here. Let's just have some fun. Oh, I'm sorry it took me so long to reframe the next shot the freaking hard disk went to sleep on me. Yeah, well, you have my sincere apologies. So it operates very quietly, as I would expect. Steve Jobs, I mean, he wasn't at the company at the time, but was not a fan of fans or noise, so there's no fan in this computer at all. It's just the hard drive that makes the noise, and right now it's asleep, so it's very freaking quiet. Oh, the, the display was even dimming. Look at that. So yeah, here we have our mouse cursor, our trackball. Yeah, we have the two clicks. I'm not really sure. Oh, there goes the hard drive. Turning back on. Yeah, I'm not sure why there's two buttons, but uh... Oh well, we have an untitled folder there, a Thanos. It's not Thanos though, it's like a possessive noun, Thanos. <laughs> I wonder what's in here. I don't really want to open this, but I'm doing it anyway. Calculator Plus, Calendar 1.4, Games, Solitaires. Oh boy. It's nice having a colored display on here though. Look at that colorful Apple logo. Yeah, so we'll just poke around on here. Okay, there's a folder called Do Not Use. That just makes me want to use it. Really? Loan Calculator. There's a lot of programs on here. We have Microsoft Word, and there's our little accessories. Yep, 7.1, 165C. Eight megabytes of memory. Ooh, that's a nice satisfying click. You know, sometimes you get old computers and the buttons are all squishy and weird. Man, that, that's nice. Okay, well, let's uh, put this baby through the test. Let's open up a super intense program like Google Chrome or Microsoft Word. I'm just kidding, Chrome didn't exist back then. What do you take me for? Microsoft Word, version 5.1. Definitely not the most colorful splash screen, but you know, we have a color display. Why do we need to use that? Blank word dement. <laughs> Okay, I have a couple issues with this thing already. First of all, well, let me make this a little bigger so you can actually see it. Let's see, font, okay. Blank word domint. So my issues are, it's not a blank file if you have a text in it, so you contradicted yourself. And secondly, domint I don't think is a word. Now, let me fix your blunder. Trust me, I am a professional document, and we're gonna save those changes to the hard disk. There we go. This file doesn't have a name. Doesn't that make you just wanna see what it is? Ooh, fascinating. Wanna do it? Let's have a look. Oh, that's a bummer. I bet you, where's my thing, that those were those confidential documents that were to be erased. What solitaries? Oh, it's solitaire. They put an S on there. I don't know why they did. Okay, well, let's play solitaire. Party like it's Windows 98. Klondike, East Haven. Let's do Klondike. Sweet. All right, it's all coming. It's, I'm getting this. I got it. It's coming back to me now. Queen can go there. Three can go there. We have a two. So that can go, that can go here or there. I guess that can. Go to any one of those. Yeah, it's much easier when you only get one card at a time as opposed to three, but that must just be how Klondike is. General info, promoted from Lieutenant info. Dad joke of the day, thank you very much. Okay, so there's that and rules. Let's take a look at the rules. So if I quit, will it save my game? I sure hope so. Oh no, forfeit, I don't wanna forfeit. No, don't use simple beep at me. It's a nice little speaker. 
I love it. Okay, fine. Forfeit. Fine Pro 2. I don't know what that is. But I don't know what a lot of things are. That's kind of why we're here. Okay, it looks like it's the find file. Show items in a hit list. Oh my. Yeah, it looks like, so if I go to like the Apple menu here and I go to, oh, sorry. I think it's in the finder now. Find. More choices. This looks very similar to this. Show. What's really the difference? I don't know. Hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but change it a little bit so nobody notices. Yeah, I feel like that's what happened right there. Okay, well, let's hop into the Macintosh hard drive, see what's lurking within. Oh, we have a hypercard player. That's pretty sweet. A buddy of mine has a shrink-wrapped hypercard box, which is pretty sweet. Word 5, which we already looked at. Macintosh Basics, is this a tutorial? We got a person's face, that's, that's a start. That probably means it's some sort of tutorial. No correlation there, I don't know where I got that. Just pulled it out of my keister. Press the return key to continue. Okay, fair enough. It sounds like my hard drive head is parking a lot. Is that normal? Do you know how to use the trackball? I mean, that's kind of a weird. I mean, if I didn't, I don't think I would have gotten this far and there's no way I could like really continue any further. So uh, sure, I, I do. This is the trackball. I think we figured that much out. Let's abort, abort the mission. Escape. Command Q doesn't do anything. Oh dear. How do we get out of this? Command Q doesn't work. Escape doesn't work. Uh, command option escape. We'll just force quit it, I guess. I don't know what was going on there. So we have another application I have not heard of before, Panorama. Let's have a look. Ooh, now that's a splash screen. Well, I guess this is the only file, so, okay. Use topics menu to select subject area, find. It says card, was this a thing made in hypercard or something? I'm guessing so. Uh, let's, let's go to a design sheet, let's see what's up there. This command and tool, who you calling a tool, adds a new record to the end of the database. Okay, but what do I do with this? Like, how exactly do I use this? This command adds a new field to the data. It looks like this is supposed to be like working with a database program, but it doesn't feel like a database program. I don't know. It feels more like a help manual. Uh, panorama, I don't know. Hang on, I'm gonna have to hit up the Google machine. I'm curious. Well, I guess I was kind of close. I'm just Googling it right now. And the series suggested website is Panorama 10 database software for Macintosh. Okay, well, let's have a look. Ah. Database, speed, power, and simplicity. Yeah, Panorama 1.0 first shipped back in 19, uh, 1988. And this version is version two. This is 1991. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so it does look like it's some sort of database application, but for some reason, I can't find a way to actually make stuff. This looks like it's just the help guide. Okay, so how do I make something new? All I have is open file. Interesting. So how do I make a new file? I have a feeling there is no way to do this. Hmm. Well, cool, I guess. I don't know how much time I really want to waste on that, unfortunately, but uh, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately. It is fortunate for me. I do have a life and I want to continue it, but uh, that's still pretty cool that it's around today. Let's go to the control panels. Let's see what the date and time panel says. Not color. Man, I really don't know how to use a trackball. Maybe I should have paid attention to that tutorial. What? Hey, stop. I was not done with you yet. Yeah, pay attention. Listen to Uncle Ken. Because the clock battery is dead, this reset back to 1904. If you're ever in a hurry and you need to rush your Word documents, you can use one of the samples. Let's have a look at what the samples look like. Envelopes, mailing labels, practice documents, you know, self-taught tutorials, I suppose. Business report, letter, brochure, memo, hmm, resume. Let's do a brochure. There we go, we got some graphics going on here. Well, let's zoom out, because I can't see anything. I'm really trying to find the freaking zoom button. I hit this button, it just like resized it off the screen. Come on, I can't get to my scroll bar now. Don't do this to me, man. Uh, I've had a rough day. You don't want to be messing with my scroll bars. 
Oh my. Oh. I just realized how slow this scroll bar is moving. It's gonna take some time to draw that stuff, huh? I'm just gonna drag the little thing down, the little handle. Oh, there's a there's a rabbit too. Okay, there's a lot going on here. If only I could zoom out and see it more. I clearly don't know how to do that. Voice annotations? Hello, what's this? There are no voice annotations in this document. Well, asshole, can I make some? Annotations. Restart from beginning? Sure, why not? Just reset the entire universe. Oh, okay, well, I already, what? How do I make some? Let's make some annotations, maybe? Aha, uh -huh. with my master degree education, I deduced that the insert menu is what I was looking for. It looks like we can do voice annotation. Let's try it out. Oh, it turns off the hard drive so it doesn't get all noisy when I record. Very smart. It's kind of like how dictation turns the fans down on the newer systems. So yeah, again, here's our speaker. That looks like our microphone right there. I'm tapping near it. Yeah, okay. Oh, we have a menu bar inside a menu bar. I can't say I've ever seen that on a Macintosh program before. That is interesting. I don't mean inside a menu bar. I just mean a menu bar below a menu bar. That's very interesting. Let's see, about voice, about voice record. Just gotta spin up the hard drive for that, yep. <laughs> That's not gonna be stored in your eight, uh, eight megabytes of memory, huh? Oh, and then it turns down again. Oh shit. Articulate Systems Incorporated. Hmm, wonder if they're still around. Who bought them? It's time for another round of who acquired this company? Device info. Hello. Sweet, sound input device built in. Allows background recording. 22 kilohertz, so that's the sample rate. And this looks like a compression ratio. Okay. Well, that's okay in my book. So we can record three seconds, it looks like, if we use the best option. Uh, ready to try this? Uh, what do I say? Um, the magic words are squeamish ostrophage. And I don't know if I said that correct. And if you get the reference, well done. You are a long time techie. That was perfect. My pie chart is now full. Let's have a listen. Yep. <laughs> Okay, um, actually I wouldn't be surprised with all these animals in here if there is an ostrich somewhere hiding. I like that. Let's insert that right now. That was fun. My voice is now like immortalized in this old computer like a time capsule of sorts. That's cool. Okay, I don't know where I just inserted that. It's probably under voice annotations in the view menu and it probably gives you a list if I had to guess. It does, that's cool. So if I'm reading the document and I'm like, wow, I'm so confused. Is this a merry-go-round or a petting zoo? You can listen to the narrator. The magic words are squeamish. Fantastic, let's abort that. Oh yeah, the escape key is there. Oh, I just broke it. Okay, we're gonna hit cancel. All right, let's save those changes. Oh, we have to perform a save as, you know, I don't know if I'm feeling that motivated to be honest, so I'm just gonna accidentally press the escape key. Well, thank you, Microsoft Word. That provided a lot of fun. No, thank you. Can I do Command N for no? Yes, I can. Look at that shortcut. Look at that Macintosh, you old son of a gun. I love you. Okay, we're gonna option click on that and close all those windows, huh? That's a nice shortcut too. Speaking of voice recording, a lot of people loved this about the old Macintosh. You could change the system beeps. I think that was even something Johnny Ive noticed and really liked about the old Mac. And I think one of the ways you could change it was you could record your own, which never made any sense to me because it would sound just horrible on that microphone. Uh, very compressed, very low resolution per sample. Uh, probably like what, four bits, <laughs> you know, per sample, um, pretty bad. But it's still fun to mess around with. So let's have a look at the sound control panel. Okay, so we have Droplet, whoop, Indigo, Simple Beep, which is pretty iconic, whack, Wild Eep, and then the world famous, almost got a company into a lawsuit, xylophone sound, Sosumi. Thank you, Jim 
reeks. I actually did a video about the Macintosh sound history, like the startup sound and stuff, and I do go deeper into that story. So do check that out. It's pretty freaking cool. There's some history there. Okay, so I guess we can add our own by using the microphone. Oh gosh. Um, I would have to get like pretty close to the microphone to actually make it sound somewhat decent. So let's try it. Oh, timing this is gonna be weird. Wah. And now the hard drive kicks in while I'm trying to record it anyway. Um, this is gonna be my own version of the quack. The Ken quack, if you will. It probably sounds horrible. <laughs> That's great. It got all that in there. Uh, yeah, it's horrible. Let's get rid of that. Let's try that again. Why did the hard drive spin up? I was trying to record, asshole. Okay, whatever. Yeah, that's a bug. That's like a huge bug in your system, Apple. Like, you can't spin up the hard disk while you're trying to record. Oh my gosh. I told you, it doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's just goofy. I'm a fan of the simple beep. Can't, can't really go wrong there. So this is version 7.1 of the operating system. So you couldn't put your desktop like picture patterns in there yet. It wasn't really that advanced. You could do like a little dot matrixy type thing, which I believe is under general controls. Yeah, and you can kind of just set your own color pattern there. And I think you could put your own like swatches in here too. Oh yeah, there you go, you got a color picker. Look at that, man, it's pretty sweet. Now let's see what the built-in ones are here. We could just do a nice, uh, nice like turquoise, maybe a little bit of a pattern there with like a, a lavender with a little bit of a accent of mint. But yeah, those are basically your options. But you have to remember, it was like 1992. System 7.5 though let you put in uh, let you put in uh, picked files, and you can have a lot more fun with that then. Okay, so this whole do not use folder is still really getting my attention. I know I kind of ignored it earlier, but I'm very curious. Why does it say do not use? Will it explode? Oh my gosh! Nope, just kidding. Didn't explode. We're fine. Yeah, okay, so let's, a loan calculator. So let's say I need a, lo a small loan of a million dollars. And uh, we'll say the economy is a real piece of shit. So we'll say that's a 30% rate. And uh, I need to pay that over 15 years. Calculate that shit. Total in <laughs> Total interest, $3.5 million. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's uh, 30%. That's a high rate there. Um, yeah, and um, each payment will be 25 grand. So well, let's do something a little more realistic. Let's do like, um, let's say you bought 125,000. Well, no, let's say you bought a $125,000 condo, but you put 20% down. This is my financial class, welcome. Okay, let's say your rate is actually really good. It's like 3.5%. Oh, but the credit union's like, oh man, there's a lot of people buying condos around you in that project and they're renting them out. So to kind of manage that a little bit in case, you know, values go wiki wiki wow, we need to increase your rate to floppy disk size, five and a quarter. And you can take out a 15 year fixed mortgage for that balance after you put your down payment down. So. What's your payment? Your payment is $803. Now, uh, that's uh, just principal <laughs> and interest, um, uh, taxes and shit. Yeah, we'll take care of that in another application. But yeah, so total interest you're gonna be paying is $44,000 over a 15 year term. And your principal and interest is gonna be $803.88 per month. So I hope you enjoyed this class, now go buy a condo. This whole Crazy Ken episode is just an elaborate scam to get people to buy condos. Hey, I need to make money somehow, right? I could just plug Curiosity Stream, but you know, everybody already does that. 
note to self YouTubers, like there's other companies out there than Curiosity Stream. Just if you want to do other sponsorships, you can. If you have any other ideas for programs or experiments you want me to tinker around with on this PowerBook, I'm totally down for that. This is a beautiful machine. Thank you, JSL, for the donation. And if anyone else has donations, like, hey, go for it. Or if you just want to support me on Patreon and get some other great rewards too, I will greatly appreciate that as well. This has been lots of fun. You guys are great. JSL, you're great. Everybody is great. The world is great. Well, maybe not. Okay, thank you. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Pass it on.